Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel DLA Classes. Hope you are all fine and enjoy, enjoyed my earlier videos. Today I will discuss path coverage. Path coverage testing. in software engineering now what is path coverage path coverage is a technique in software engineering which is a basically a white box testing strategy it's a white box testing technique also known as structural testing which basically aim is to cover each and every linearly independent part at least once so to know the linearly independent part we should know what is cfg so know the path coverage technique we should know what is cfg that means what is control flow graph control flow graph now what is a control flow graph it's a graphical representation of a particular program under execution for example say this is a particular program you have to represent the particular program in the form of a graphical representation. Now in CFZ, what is the basic building blocks? It's some nodes are there and some edges are required to represent the particular program. So know the details about the CFZ. Uh, the video link is given in the description because we have already discussed about this uh, CFG. So I am not uh, explaining too much in this particular video. But you remember or you keep in mind that control flow graph is basically a graphical representation of a particular program. And there are different type of uh, methodology or different type of uh, representation, how to represent the iterative statements, how to represent the control flow uh, uh, your sequ sequence statements, how to represent your if else condition. Uh, those are given in the description. So you should go through the video to learn about that control flow graph. Now, in particular control flow graph, it basically in uh, typical say CFG is look like this. Let's say including a say if your particular program is having some if else condition, so this CFG look like this. So in CFG you have multiple number of part. Now what is a part? Part is a sequence of some edges and nodes in a CFC. So this is a particular part say 1, 2, 3, 5 is a particular part, 1, 2, 4, 5 is a particular part. So in your particular program there may be a numerous number of parts based on your starting node and terminal node. So a part is this is a start node and this is a terminal node. So, a part is a sequence of some edges and nodes from start node to the terminal node. If your program has multiple number of terminal nodes, your number of parts will be larger. And also, if your program contains some looping conditions, say there is a loop between these two, your number of parts also increases. But even though your uh, particular program is uh, very simple, if your looping condition is very large, say, and uh, your loop time uh, uh, continues for 100 times then there will be definitely minimum 100 number of parts will be there but is it possible to design test cases to cover all this part not possible because uh, you do not know how many how many times the number of nodes will be executed or even though you if you know it it is not possible to design to test cases for all this code if your uh, program is very large if your conditional statements of iterative statements is very large so there is a concept called linearly independent path. Uh, so we should know what is linearly independent path. So that's why in the definition I am telling about the in path coverage testing, it is testing technique, you have to cover each and every linearly independent path at least once. Now what is linearly independent path? say a linearly independent path path 
is a part which introduces at least one new edge which is not present in any other part that is already covered so any linearly independent part basically introduces at least one particular edge which is not covered in any other uh, path which is already covered that means if there are two paths and this two part if this part contains a particular edge which is not present in there that means both the uh, paths are linearly independent to each other for example for example say in your particular program say one we have discussed this already earlier so draw the diagram again say four so in this particular path say one two four is a particular path then here another part is one three four you see this edges is not present in earlier covered path so both these parts are linearly independent part now what is the importance of this linear independent part say why it is important i am already just telling about that you have told about that uh, uh, there may be a huge number of paths if a program is very large and say 10000 number of paths are there in your particular program but if your program out of this 10000 number of part only the 100 other linear independent part that means all the remaining parts are subset of of this any of this uh, 100 linearly independent part so if you find out the number of linearly independent part and if you cover this 100 linearly independent part by designing some test cases then no need to cover this 10000 because if you cover this this will be covered already because these are a subset of this so that is the basic basic benefit of the linear independent part which is the part coverage test technique but uh, remember always that it is not possible uh, it is not very simple to find out the order in any independent part. So uh, there is a, another, there is a technique to find out the linear independent part. So not finding, you should know how many number of linear independent part in your particular program. What is the technique? That technique name is known as Metcalfe's cyclometric complexity. Metcalfe's cyclometric. complexity so Thomas J. Metcalfe in 1976 he has introduced this particular metric to find out the complexity of a particular program so what is the basic benefit of this metric is that the value of this particular complexity metric will give you the upper bound of number of linearly independent part in a particular program so if you know the cyclometric complexity of a particular program you will know definitely that how many number of maximum linear independent part will be there so it will make the path coverage technique easier but remember that it only give you the upper bound not the paths details so to identify the different type of linearly independent part you have to get the knowledge your need the experience of the testing techniques so that actually depends on how you design the test cases to cover each and every part but you uh, have a preview of a prior idea that how many number of uh, linear independent parts are present so there are different method to find out the cyclometric complexity you already discussed the link is given in the description you can go through the video but there are three methods method one so this method one actually depends on the number of edges number of nodes so this actually depends on this value will represent the cyclometric complexity there is another method which is uh, depends on number of uh, conditions in a particular program so method three number of areas so we can go you can go through the video your link is given in the description to know the details 
So, I am not discussing details in this particular uh, lecture. So, we have to use this, any of this particular method of this psychometric complexity finding technique to find out the uh, path coverage technique. So, basically in the path coverage testing technique, there are four steps. Steps in path coverage technique, testing technique, number one you have to draw the CFC. So, because you know um, need to find out the linear independent path. So, do that you have to draw the CFG of the particular program. Then you have to find out the MAC caps. Cyclomatic complexity value. So, by doing this you will find the upper bound of the linearly independent path. Number three is that after finding out the cyclomatic complexity, you have to find out the linearly independent paths. Then the last steps you have to design test cases to cover all this linear independent, independent part who have uh, been identified in step 3. So, draw the CFG, make up cyclic complexity finding out, then find the linear independent part of a particular program and design test cases. So, these are the basically four steps for path coverage testing technique. So, let us take one example to find the path coverage strategy. So, this is the particular program you see there are seven step and sit there. So, if you convert this particular program then uh, you have to design seven nodes. So, in node one for the first statement, if condition is satisfied, then it will go to the statement two. If condition is satisfied, it will go to node three. The condition is not satisfied, it will go to node four. Then it will come to nodes five. If condition is not satisfied, it will condition satisfied even then six condition is not satisfied it will go to statement six and seven is always there so this is the cfg for the particular program so you have to find we have draw the cfg so step one completed step one completed what is the next step you have to find the cyclometric complexity so by using the method one so we can use any method from this method, what is the cyclometric complexity? Say m is your cyclometric complexity. What is the number of uh, uh, edges are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 8 edges are there. So, E is there. So, nodes, how many number of nodes? 7 plus 2. So, 1 plus 2. So, there are 3 number of linear independent paths. So, make up cyclometric complexity 3. So, there will be 3 number of linear independent paths. So, from this, what are different types of path? So, path 1, this is one path, say 1, 6, 7. This is one path. What is path 2? 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. So, what is path 3? 1, 2, 4, 5, Six, seven. You see, you look at these different paths, all are linear independent path. So, you have to design test cases for cover all these test cases. So, if you say test cases, test case 1, if you a equal to, if you give a equal to 6, 7, b equal to 6, say c equal to 4, you are covering which part? You are covering the 1, 2, 3, 5, 6 and 7. So, you are covering part uh, 3, right? You are covering 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. That means you are covering part 2, right? If you are giving test case 2, test, sorry test case 2. If you are giving a equal to 7, b equal to say 
five uh, four c equal to say six. Now what we are doing? You are covering the first statement is covered. So one two four five six seven. That means you are covering part three. So you are covering part three, right? If you design the test cases three, say a equal to four, b equal to six, c equal to four. Any cases, this value may be greater than larger. Doesn't matter because you are covering a greater than b. So if this is not satisfied, we are covering the first statement. So first part, that means part one. So if you are designing all these test cases, so test cases one, your first part is co part, part two is covered. For this test cases is part three is covered. For this test case cases, part one is covered. So this is the technique to find the part coverage testing technique in file box. So hope you understood this particular video. So if any comment, any suggestion you can give in the comment section. So uh, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe my channel. Uh, hope to see you soon in the next video. Thank you.